Hello and welcome to the Friday, October 2nd, 2020 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Of course, we are all aware that uh, companies are moving servers into the cloud at a record rate. And with that, security-relevant services like, for example, Active Directory often end up in the cloud as well. Of course, Microsoft is ready for that with Azure AD. And today we have a quick diary from Daniel about how to actually deal with AAD logs. Now, yes, you can haul them back in to your on-premise security infrastructure, but well, that probably moved into the cloud as well. And Microsoft again has a solution for you here to directly import your Azure AD or AAD logs into a log analytics space within Azure. Daniel is explaining how to find some interesting events in uh, this uh, case and what to uh, look for here. Because after all, well, a now Active Directory is exposed to the internet and with that, of course, monitoring it becomes even more important. And now, of course, if you, for example, come up uh, with a suspicious IP address or such uh, by reviewing these logs, you better act on it fast and also review these logs uh, regularly. And that's really what a second diary by Daniel is about. And that's the lifetime of indicators of compromise, which, as he points out, often then become indicators of outdated intelligence. Quite often organizations love uh, to purchase and apply in the case of compromise like IP addresses and malware hashes that have a very short uh, lifetime. And while it's easy to apply and search for these in the case of compromise, the value of that search may be somewhat limited. And yes, it may be worth the time to actually look for some of the more complex techniques, tactics, and procedures that are not as quickly and simply matched to log files. And Apple pulled the latest Mojave security update 2025 and also removed Safari 14 from its download site. If you have it already installed and everything works fine, uh, nothing for you to do here. But apparently there are a lot of people that reported problems with this latest set of security patches. Some of uh, the problems are a little bit uh, more uh, fussy, like uh, for example, large use of memory, slow boot times, and also a higher than normal fan speed. But apparently there are also problems uh, just uh, doing, for example, local snapshots with TMUtil and uh, also running the software update tool on the command line. Also, it may be impossible to create new local users. In the show notes, you'll find a link uh, to a blog post that summarizes these issues and also offers some workarounds in case you are affected. And recent versions of the Emotet malware have been following uh, some of uh, the well older malware's pattern of using infected systems to then send more email from and using the legitimate email address of the system's owner as from address. Well, Italian cybersecurity company TG Soft now set up a website where essentially what they did is they collected all of these Emotet emails and you can look up if your email address was used as a from address for one of these Emotet emails. You can also search just by domain. Now, uh, there is a chance, of course, that uh, your email address was just faked. Uh, well, the website actually distinguishes between uh, that and it will indicate if uh, the email was the actual sender of the email or if it was a fake sender. It also tells you if you are a recipient of uh, that email, but well, then you probably already know that. 
Emotet has been used uh, to distribute uh, ransomware. For example, the Ryuk ransomware that has been implicated in some major ransomware cases recently. And uh, yes, you know, if you find your domain within the database, that's sort of one of the pieces of malware that may have been installed as a result. Well, and that's what I got for you today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.